so this is the story of after years and years and years of denying that I had been abused or brainwashed at Sea-Doo, the first thing that clicked for me, that's what this story is about. This story is about how I started to put that together. I don't know how long it's going to be, but just turn it off now. So, um, and remember, I have said in past videos that in order for me to have had anything start clicking for me, there certain things had to be in place. Um, I had taken a number of economics classes and I had taken a number of critical thinking classes. And those two things are imperative and absolutely the main ingredients in um, <laughs> the recipe for me being able to to actually look objectively at what they did to me. So I've also mentioned in previous videos that one of the things they did that um, the first step in brainwashing is attacking the identity. And so one of those things um, was after we'd been there for about a year or a year and a half, they sent us home um, and they sent us home to throw away everything we owned, everything that was our identity prior to SIDU. So we have to keep my education and then we have to understand this, this part of how SIDU really attacked our identity and brainwashed us. So the story goes like this. I was, uh, sitting on my front lawn with all my belongings <laughs> I mean not every single thing but really 98% of my belongings on my um, front yard and I was sitting in a chair in the midst of all of it and giving it away to people who were coming by so um, by the way this happened in I think 2010 and at the point this happened, Aaliyah had been telling me for quite some time, for years and years, that what they did to us was wrong. And I just kept denying it. I couldn't understand and I couldn't put it together um, up until this point. So I'm sitting on my lawn in the middle of all my things and the phone rings and I answer it and it's Aaliyah. And she says, what are you doing? And I said, sitting in my front yard with all my belongings, giving them away to passerbys. And she said, why are you doing that? And I actually thought about what the answer to that question was. And I said, I don't know. I do it every year or a year and a half or so. And she said, do you find that at all strange? Do you know why you're doing that? She didn't even mention Sidu at all. She just, she really, all she did was ask me a question and <laughs> thinking objectively and critically about what the answer was to that question, I came to the conclusion, it just clicked for me. I don't know why I've been doing this every year. But <laughs> it could have something to do with Sidu. And after this, everything started to come together for me. Um, I thought even, why, can, why do I only keep a job for three to six months? And I thought about why that might be 
I realized later in life when I started going through my Sidhu journals that I was experiencing profits every three to six months for three years. And I had really, without even knowing it, come to this place where in my mind, any time one of these profit anniversaries came up, I was freaking out and having a trauma response and grabbing all my stuff and walking out of my job. <laughs> like, I don't even know. Anyway, that was another thing that started to click for me and make sense. Um, so after, you know, really my education had to be in place. Um, I, I had to know how to look objectively at something and think critically about it. And really it changed my whole entire life. I no longer sat around wondering if I'm crazy. <laughs> I went to therapy and uh, was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. And then I learned what that means and that totally made sense to me. And it's just been snowballing and clicking and making sense for me ever since. Aaliyah asked me that question. <laughs> Why are you doing that? Oh, I just love Aaliyah.